welcome back to our project comparing classification models for cryptocurrency machine learning. In this lecture, we're beginning the project by loading and preparing our data into Colab. We're going to get the data from Yahoo Finance. So you can go to finance.yahoo.com and search up your stock. Go to historical data and then select a time period and download the stock data. Then we are going to upload our stock data to the Colab project. Click on the folder, then upload file and select the CSV file that we're going to use. You can also find this in the source files of this section. Then let's get started with reading the data and preparing it for our project. So we're going to pass the data path, which will be eth-usd.csv. Then we're going to import pandas and save our data by using pandas.readcsv, passing in our data path. We can then call data.head to inspect the data set. As well, we can automatically change the column that is the index column to be the date column. We can in infer the date time format with true and parse the dates as well. If you rerun the code cell, your data frame index column will change. Now, because we're doing classification, we are going to need some kind of column here that is a class instead of just a number on a number scale, because that would be for regression. So uh, let's get started with creating. In our case, we'll create a signal using returns and the signal will be to either buy or sell. So for this, we first have to create a column in our data frame called returns. To do that, we take the data at one of the prices and we calculate the percentage change. Then we can call data.head to inspect our results. Okay, then I'm going to create a short window and a long window for a fast simple moving average and a slow simple moving average. So I'm going to take the data and create a fast underscore simple moving average column using my close column and a rolling function where we'll pass in the window and we'll use a short window. So we can then create a short window such as three days and we want the average of that. Then we can inspect our head to see the results. All right, so you can see we have fast underscore simple moving average. Next up, let's perform a similar process, but this time we're going to use a long window. Let's set this long window to be 30. And instead of using a fast simple moving average, this is called a slow simple moving average. So we'll have both. Because our window is 30 days, the first 29 days will be not a number. We can drop all of the not a number values, so that way we don't have any mathematical errors later on. This will also reduce the number of rows you have because it removes all the rows that have not a number. Okay, next, let's create a signal column. So for this, I'm going to create a new column in the data frame called a signal and initially set it to 0.0, .0 on each row. Then we need to populate the signal. So we're going to have a buy signal, which will be one and a sell signal, which will be negative one. Let's start with buying. We're going to take our data dot location and we're going to find, oops, let's see, I wrote it wrong. We're going to take our data at location and we're going to search for where the data returns column is greater than or equal to zero, in which case our signal will be to buy. Just be careful here about the parentheses and the square brackets of where they're located. You can inspect your data now and you'll see you have the signal changed at some locations. As well, we can follow a similar process for when to sell. So when should we sell? Well, we should sell when the returns are less than zero. We can run the code cell and we can see our signal column will have changed. All right, so that is how we can specify our signal or what we're trying to predict with classification. All right, and next up, we have to define our X and Y data. So I'm going to create a new code cell. My X is going to be 
my data at the fast simple moving average and the slow simple moving average shifted by one index and dropping any null values. My Y data will be my data at the signal column. And you can run the code cell. Then we can inspect our X value, check how many rows it has, and our Y value. You'll notice the values don't quite match up because we had to remove that first row from X because it was a null value, but then that remains in Y. So we have to adjust this issue of the length, and for that we can set the date offset that we want to use. So I'm going to import from pandas.tseries.offsets the date offset function or class. Then I'm going to specify when I want to begin training. So let's begin training at the minimum index for X, that starting date. We should also define when we're going to end training. So we'll take the beginning of training and we're going to add a date offset. Here we can pass in, for example, how many years we want to use, like three. Then we can run the code cell to make sure that the date offset works. Then we can define our X train, our Y train, our X test, and our Y test. Starting with training, we take X and we specify the location of where we begin training up to where we end training. Similarly for Y train, we take our Y and we specify from the beginning of training until the end of training. Then for the test X, or X test, we take our X and this time we go from the end training plus a date offset such as one hour up till the end of the data set. And for Y test, we can use X dot location of end training plus the date offset of hours equals one up to the end of the data set. We can run our code cell to make sure that we can store all these values and then we can paste out X train and inspect its number of rows as well as its starting point as well as Y train. Okay, so now the length matches up in terms of the number of rows for X train and Y train. X test and Y test should also match up. We can also scale our data to make sure that larger values don't have more importance. So we're going to import from scikit-learn.preprocessing the standard scalar. Then we can take the scalar and instantiate it and define the scalar that we're going to use. So we have to train it with the fit function on our training data. Then we can take our X train and scale it using the scalar and call the transform function on our training data. Same thing for our testing data. We can take the scalar and transform it. Now for the Y data, we don't have to scale it because it's just a number of negative one or one. Okay, so now we have our data prepared, which means we can start our classification models. So join me coming up in our next lecture, we're going to build some classifiers. Hello everyone and welcome back to our project comparing classification models for cryptocurrency machine learning. Previously we loaded and prepared our data, which means we're now ready to build our classification models. We're going to start with a support vector machine classification model. So from scikit-learn.svm I'm going to import the support vector classifier. Here we can build our SVC underscore model variable and instantiate the SVC object. We're going to use a linear kernel and we can set a random state such as 42. Then we can call our SVC underscore model dot fit on our trained data. And as well, if you did scale your X training data, then pass in the scaled data. All right, so now our model is trained, which means we can use it to make a prediction. So I'm going to create a predictions variable and take the SVC model and use the predict function on my X test scaled. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.